With the new 0.4 update for LSPDFR, I figured it would be a good time to start fresh, start clean, and build our LSPDFR mod the way we want to. So this is going to be a multi-part series that are going to cover a various number of topics to get you set up in LSPDFR 0.4. Before we begin, you must have GTA 5 on PC. That is a requirement. What I've done first, I completely uninstalled and deleted all my old GTA 5 files, re-downloaded the game. This is recommended from the developers of LSPDFR that you start fresh. That way, you don't have any remnants over from 0.3 that might affect your game. So on the left side here, we've got a clean install of GTA 5, the latest version. If you hit right click properties, you can see we are on 16.04.1, the latest one. All right, what you're gonna do is download LSPDFR. Link will be down below. I like to do the manual setup. This is my preference. And to do the manual setup, it's simply drag and drop. But before you begin that, let's run GTA 5 first, make sure it is actually up and running. All right, you can see we're in the game. There are no mods, no car mods, no LSPDFR, none of that. And autosave did actually pick up, so I believe it's in the Steam Cloud. So we're gonna exit out of the game now and install LSPDFR 0.4. To install 0.4, it's really simple. You're just gonna drag and drop into your main directory. So go ahead and do that. Should just take a few seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on how fast your computer is. Okay, once this is done, I've already got a shortcut that feeds into this folder. So I'm gonna use that to open it. If you don't have that, just go ahead and click rage plugin hook.exe in your main directory. Go ahead and run the program. You wanna unblock these files. You have a quick disclaimer to go ahead and accept. I've got it running as an min. You might not need to do that though. So you can back up your game with Rage Plugin Hook. I keep manual backups, but if you don't have that, it's a good idea to back up your game. In case you break anything, you want clean copies to go back to. What I like to do is go ahead, load these plugins on startup. You wanna go ahead and load LSPDFR. And I like to disable permanent version text rendering. That removes the Rage plugin hook text in the bottom of the screen. One more thing I do is go ahead down here and tell it to force window mode when it opens. Otherwise I have problems with rage plugin hook starting. So from there, go ahead, save and launch and you should boot right up into rage plugin hook. Should be greeted with a screen like this. Let it load through everything it needs to. All right, LSPDFR has been loaded. So one of the new features of LSPDFR is creating your own police character. What we're gonna do is head to a police station. We're gonna go to the one up here in Rockford Hills and we will see what creating a character looks like. We're gonna walk into the station. All right, so we just wanna go ahead and select go on duty. And it should prompt you to go to the character selection menu since we have not yet created a character. Now this is gonna be the same creator as GTA Online so you can really customize your character to however you want to. We're gonna go ahead and do that now. You can furthermore go into nose tip, nose profile, eyes, brows, cheeks, lips. You can all customize that to however you want it to be. There are also a couple preset characters you can choose from. We're gonna use the new one we created. Another thing I'm gonna do in the future for each department I'm in, I want a different character. That way we don't have a character jumping from department to department. Via the police locker, we can change the current agency, loadout, and outfit. So right now we want to be LSPD. And here's our outfit choices. I believe EUP still works, but we will get into that in a later episode.
There's a couple different inventory setups as well. And also you can go in it further and to change certain components as well as props in your outfit. We're gonna leave this as it is for now. Now we're gonna select a vehicle. Changing police vehicles is gonna be a topic for another vehicle. So right now we just have all these standard police vehicles into the game. Now in the start pause menu, you've got a new section called LSPDFR. And in that section, you can actually take a look at the main keys. So these are keys you're going to be using a lot on your keyboard and just take a look at them. They're pretty simple. Most of them interlapped with one another. So that is good to see. Also, there are settings for LSPDFR, including callout multiplier, world events, interval multiplier, world events, maximum number, preload all models, ambient display, disable player flashlight override, and chase cops can commandeer vehicles. Also can show you what type of callouts are currently loaded, as well as uh, your character information. Going over some of those LSPD fire keys, B is gonna be your backup menu. This is if you want particular units at a scene, you can actually even choose a certain agency. Just like callouts before, you will get a call out and you will have to hit Y to accept it. We're not gonna do that at the time because we're still going through some of these changes. Q is gonna bring up your police computer. You're gonna use this to search for license plates and subject names. Another cool thing is when you get an ID, you can actually use the tab key on your keyboard to tab through different names of IDs you've collected. That way you don't have to remember the full name when you're trying to look it up. So vehicle pursuit menu is gonna be in. We took a Grand Theft Auto call. You can change lethal force to be forced off if you have trouble with backup being a little too, uh, too aggressive. Uh, you also can change behavior to pursuit or tracking and particular agencies. So lots of features within that menu. If we lose a subject, we'll go into this mode, similar to GTA story mode, where police are looking actively for a suspect. I took a little too long to respond there. Kind of the cooldown period. Shows actually an X on the map. I think that's where it was last spotted. See other units in the area looking for the vehicle as well. And it's not here at the last location, big shocker. Another new update is LSPDFR Sync. This is in the pods menu. Here you are, you can configure your LSPDFR account to sync with this and have certain stats. So let's go ahead and do that. So that just pulls up LSPDFR and then you can come back to the game and it's linked. You can see you are now linked, logged in as first 30 minutes. The last thing I wanna talk about, say you're done patrolling and you wanna go back to your house. What we can do here is go ahead and go to the nearest police station. This will teleport us. We'll go ahead, enter it, and we'll head off duty and head back to our apartment. You can see we're now off duty. So we'll use that same menu to go in here and head to our apartment. You can do a couple of different things in your apartment. There's a full list on the LSPDFR website, but you can shower, you can watch TV, you can eat stuff, you can go to bed. Pretty similar to how it is uh, if you're playing a real character and <laughs> walking out of the shower fully clothed. So this is pretty nice. You can just do things in your leisure time to actually feel like you're a, uh, a real character within the game. If we head outside, you'll notice we have a vehicle here. So this vehicle is persistent. It will stay here as long as it's here. You can get a different vehicle and back it into this spot and we'll save it as your current vehicle. But I think this Stanier is a pretty standard car for a character for this time. So those are the features I wanted to go over. This is just starting your LSPDFR game. We will continue this tutorial series by installing real police cars, EMBs, different callouts, and uh, how to further customize your game. If you enjoyed this series, please leave a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, 
and we'll catch you back for part number two.